Welcome. In this video, I'm going to go over the procedure to install AppCacher on G on a Raspberry Pi. So if you find this video helpful, I'll put a link in the description to a Raspberry Pi on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So I'm setting this up on a newly installed Raspbian desktop, but this would be more ideal for Raspbian Lite. It's just easier for me to film this video on the desktop version. And this would work on a Raspberry 1, 2, 3, 4. This is a good project if you have an old Raspberry Pi laying around and you want something to do with it. So if you're not really sure what AppCacher NG is, Linux distributions like Raspbian use the App Package Manager to install software, and the cache allows you to have multiple machines connect up to the cache and access the packages from the cache, and the cache downloads them from the internet. So say you had five Raspberry Pis, you could install AppCacher NG on one of them, and then connect the other four to the AppCacher NG, and when one Raspberry Pi wants to do a system update, it contacts the cache, the cache looks in its local repository for the package, and if it doesn't have it, it downloads it. And then when a second Raspberry Pi connects up to do the update, it just downloads it from its own repository, so it doesn't have to go back on the internet again. You can also connect up Ubuntu, Linux Mint. This should work with any other system that uses the App Package Manager. So the one I currently use, I connect with Raspberry Pi, Ubuntu, and it can handle it all. You may have seen a package called App Cacher. It's not NG. And I've tried that one. That one didn't seem to work as well for me. Uh, I don't think it supported having multiple distributions connected to it. This could also be used if you're messing around a lot with computers or building virtual machines and you just install a lot. So when I make my videos, I'll do an install, I'll make notes, and then I'll go back and do it again and again to test it and to uh, get good documentation on it. And each time I do that, it's easier if I just download packages from the cache instead of having to download them from the internet each time. So to get started, you want to open up a terminal and you want to type sudo space apt space update. This will download the latest directory of packages. Next, I want to type sudo space app space install space app dash cacher dash ng. I'll hit enter. Okay, we have a little message pop up here. I do want to mention though also uh, the commands that I'm typing in on the screen. I'll put a link to my website in the description so you can click there and you can see them there. You can even SSH into a Raspberry Pi and copy and paste those commands over pretty easily. So this says app cacher ng can be configured to allow users to create HTTP tunnels which can be used to access remote servers that might otherwise be blocked by for instance, firewall filtering HTTPS connections. This feature is usually disabled for security reasons, enabled only for trusted LAN environments. Allow HTTP tunnels through AppCacher NG, and I'll say yes, because I don't use any kind of filtering software like that. Okay, so that's completed. I'll clear my screen here. Next, I want to change my host name. So I'll type sudo space hostname ctl space set dash hostname space, and then I'll just call this app dash cacher dash ng. I'll hit enter. Then I'll type sudo space nano space forward slash etc forward slash hosts. I'll hit enter. I'll use my cursor to go down here to Raspberry Pi and I'll change that to app cacher ng. I'll type control O to save, control X to exit. So now I'll type sudo space systemctl space restart space avahi dash daemon. I'll hit enter. So now I can type ping space app dash cacher dash ng dot local. I'll hit enter. I'll type control C to exit out of that. So if you don't want to use a local DNS name, you can use the IP address. To do that, you type IP space A, hit enter, and we can see the IP address here. I have 192.168.7.206, and this is on the ethernet interface. You could in theory run this on Wi-Fi, but it's probably better to run it on ethernet. So I'll clear this out here. And this host name is not changed here. If I reopened the terminal, like it would come up correct. I'll open up a web browser. I'll type in HTTP colon slash slash app dash cacher dash ng dot local colon 3142. I'll hit enter. And now we have this kind of admin page for the app cacher ng. So this has instructions on how to set it up for your clients. So the first client we'll set up is the app cacher server itself. So I'll go to a terminal. I'll type sudo space nano space forward slash etc forward slash app forward slash app dot conf dot d forward slash zero zero app proxy. I'll hit enter. And now if we go back to the site, we want to take this here. I'll copy it and then I'll paste it. So this tells the system to use this proxy for installing app packages. And I'll actually change this to app dash cacher dash ng dot local. I'll type control O to save, control X to exit. I'll clear my screen. So I'm going to make this terminal a little bit smaller and I'm going to open up another terminal. And here I'm going to type tail space dash F 
space forward slash var forward slash log forward slash app dash cacher ng forward slash app cacher dot log. I'll hit enter. So what tail does is it shows the last 10 lines in a file and what f does says uh, any files that are added display on the screen. So there's nothing in this now but this will show us the log as we're using this app cacher software. So I'll go back to my other terminal here and I'll type sudo space app space install space links and this could be any package. I'm just using this as an example. I'll hit enter. It asks me if I want to continue. I'll say yes. Now we see over in this log something's actually occurring. So this downloaded two packages. It did links common and links and you see I and O. So I is input and O is output. So input is where the cache downloaded it to its repository and output is where it sent it to the client that was requesting it. Now in this case we're on our own computer but I could have set this up on any Linux computer on the same LAN and it would work the same way. So the next person to come along here downloading links will just have an O. There'll be no I because it will already be in the repository. So I'll go back over to my screen here. I'll clear it. I'll type sudo space app space purge space links. I'll hit enter. I'll say yes. Then I'll type sudo space app space auto remove. I'll hit enter there. I'll say yes. I'll clear the screen. So now I'll install links again. And I'll say yes. So I have a confession to make. This is the second time I uh, am recording this video. The first time I recorded it, my mic wasn't plugged in. But that first time I recorded it, I actually timed this. And the install command took about half as long. So if you're running lots of packages, it will be a big, huge speed up. Uh, like if you have, say, four Raspberry Pis that are updating the whole system or installing like LibreOffice or LibreOffice updates or something like that, um, this can significantly be a lot faster. So if we go back over to our log here, you see there's two O's here. So it outputted this file twice. You can also go to the website, and you don't have to run this on this machine. You can run it on any computer on the network. We can go to the statistics and report configuration page, and we can hit count data here. And this tells us we had two hits and two misses. So the two misses were the first time we downloaded it. The two hits were the second time we used it. So you may be wondering how big of an SD card you'll need to build a system like this. So I just checked mine a little bit ago, and I had about 15 gigabytes in the repository. I'll show you how you can check that. I'll clear this. You want to type du space dash sh space forward slash var forward slash cache forward slash app cache or ng. I'll hit enter and here we used 1.7 megabytes. So my computer has 15 gigabytes and that includes Raspberry Pi, Ubuntu, different uh, distributions and releases of those systems. So a 16 gigabyte card would probably work fairly well in a Raspberry Pi unless you're a heavy user then you might want to go with a 32. So if I had started off with a 16 gig card I would have filled it up probably by now because the system would be on there too. But a 32 would give me lots of breathing room. So that's all for this video. If you have any questions please leave them in the comments. If you like this video please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.